Thank you for your interest in Zach's Taser Trader, the service that blends technical analysis with the Zach's rank and just the right amounts of each. And when you're talking about technical analysis here at Zach's, who better person to head up a service like this than our senior equity strategist, Kevin Cook, who happens to be here with me now to fill us in on some of the particulars with this new service. Kind of like uh, soup and sandwich, right? Yeah. Uh, technical analysis and Zach's Peanut rank. butter and chocolate, you know, the best <laughs> of both worlds. Yeah, we'll create a s'more out of it. How's that? Let's start uh, right at the beginning. What strikes me first is that you really don't need to be a technician to be in this service, to benefit from this service when you have someone like yourself guiding it along yeah, the way. Yeah, I mean, that's that's my goal. And, you know, we're, we're building it on the foundation of the Zach's rank and then you know, overlaying technical analysis. So we've got the strongest stocks we want to look at, Zach's number ones and number twos, mm -hmm. and and then I have certain uh, screens and scans I can use to find out, you know, the strongest stocks technically of those number ones and number twos. So what is the inspiration <clears throat> for you behind creating a service yeah, like I this? Yeah, I mean, it. some of it's just simplicity. To be able, you know, the Zach's rank does so much fundamental homework for you already. Mm -hmm. You know, when you've got a Zach's rank number one, you know you've got earnings momentum on your side for a one to, month, one to three month swing trade. And then to find the technically strongest stocks that are actually moving, you know, and, and you've, got, you've got trend and momentum on your side, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's the beauty. And it's a great time for this too. Uh, you know, some believe that we're in the later innings of the bull market, and it's hard to argue that, you know, after a seven year run like we've had, uh, the market's got new life here in 2017. Right. But, uh, you know, we just went through two years of sideways chop, lots of doubt about the economy and earnings. Right. And people were ready to, you know, throw the baby out with the bathwater and say, hey, the end is nigh, you know. But here we are again making new highs. And throughout that whole period, there were always strong stocks that you could find using the Zach's rank sure. and, you know, some basic charting skills. And so this has to be exciting for you to launch a service like this. As far as time frames are concerned, holding periods that mm -hmm. you're focused on, <clears throat> what do members need to know? Yeah, so, you know, it, what's so common now when we talk about day traders and everybody and their mother's a day trader is people doing, you know, these real micro trades in and out in an hour, you know, in and out in a day. That's not what we're doing here because, you know, first of all, the, you know, the Zach's rank is a, is a timing indicator for the fundamentals, which says this is a one to three month window that we expect the stock to accelerate because earnings, estimates are accelerating. Mm -hmm. So that's really the time frame we're looking at here is we're, so we're not going to be doing day trades. We're not even going to be doing one to three day trades. Although if I had a 20% gain in three days, I might take it. Sure. Um, so, but we're looking for that sweet spot of the stock is set up fundamentally to rally because earnings estimates are rising. And what are the technical indicators saying? You know, do we have a volume push? Do we have uh, a reversal? Do we have a breakout? You know, a, a, lot, a lot of patterns that we want to watch here. You know, you get a stock going sideways in a continuation, and all of a sudden it lines up with the fundamentals, break out to new highs. And we're seeing a lot of those right now. Is there a number in your <clears throat> mind for total number of constituents in the portfolio? You know, we're going to, I would say, 8 to 12 positions at any given time. Okay. You know, no more than 12, and, and you know, probably rarely fewer than 8. So, you know, just call it an average of 10 positions. Okay. Well, you know, you uh, are often uh, as much a critic of technical analysis and charting as you are a fan. And so <laughs> you've got some myths that you want to debunk for members of the service. Yes. Right? Crush, I guess, is the word you Absolutely. Used. I'm going to break some hearts and minds here with some of the things I have to say. You've got three big ones. <clears throat> we'll go down each one at a time. The first... Trend lines are meaningful. Yes, we need to crush this myth. And really, I'm killing a sacred cow here. Yeah. You know, when you talk about technical analysis, the Bible for technical analysis is the book by Edwards and McGee. And that's where everybody learned to take a ruler and draw straight lines on a chart. Now, this is mm -hmm. before computers. Edwards and McGee were doing it, taking a ruler and connecting highs and lows. And right. um, now computers do it for us. And, and the, you know, the, the, uh, the charting powers that be, the technical analysis gurus, mm -hmm. still use these. They're connecting highs and lows with straight lines. And I think that is mathematically absurd. 
And here's my logic. Markets are the most complex dynamic systems on the planet. Mm -hmm. You know, tons of variables happening over time that are affecting price. So to say that a, uh, a swing high connected with a straight line to a subsequent swing high mm -hmm. is meaningful is absolutely absurd because markets are so complex, they're nonlinear, so why would you use straight lines? And I made a whole video about this that I'll, that I'll uh, link for to the group where I explain it in more detail, besides the fact that anybody drawing that line can arbitrarily choose what price lows or highs to, to line up. So, not, just, not to say, though, <clears throat> that stock charts are not useful. No, no, I'm just talking about drawing straight lines okay. on uh, systems that have curvature, systems that are nonlinear, <laughs> you know, thermodynamic, yeah. and lots of variables happening in many dimensions. Straight lines don't apply. You know, somebody might say, well, what about in statistics where you do, uh, you know, a linear regression? Now, that's fine. A linear regression is actually statistically sound because you're lining up, uh, you know, the middle points of the data, and mm -hmm. you might put a, uh, you know, an outside frame on that too. But that's not what most chartists do with trend lines. Okay, you lost me at straight line, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> number two myth: magic numbers exist for moving average crossovers. Right. So moving average crossover, crossovers are very popular. I use moving averages to define trend and to get a, a feel for it, the trend when I look at a chart. Uh, but what everybody wants to do is pick two moving averages and when they cross over, you know, that's either bullish or bearish, but they're getting very precise about the numbers they use. They want to, some people want to use the nine day and the 18 day, or they want to use Fibonacci numbers like the 13 day and the 21 day. Mm -hmm. And I did a bunch of research on this 20 years ago when I was a currency trader and found that it doesn't matter what combinations you use. They're all gonna about produce the same thing. So if it works for somebody, if, they've, if they're using a 34 and a 55 day, uh, and it works for them, great. But there, I just wanna say there are no magic numbers and you can just as easily use 10, 20, and 40 period uh, to get an idea for trend and, and not precise crossovers. You should only use it to, you know, use other indicators to confirm which direction you wanna go. All right, and then, Myth number three, trading is simple and requires only a few setups. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, you know, trading is not simple. It's one of the hardest games in town. Mm -hmm. uh, I come from a family of pilots. I learned to fly an airplane when I was 15 years old, and I have tremendous respect for pilots because they have um, people's lives in their hands. Mm -hmm. So to me, that's one of the mentally toughest jobs and has to be done right. Or a surgeon, a surgeon has somebody's life in their hands. Now when you're trading, you don't have your life in your hands. You've got, you know, just your money, but the psychological challenges to do the wrong thing mm -hmm. are ever present. You know, we are, the golden rule in trading is uh, cut your losses short and let your winners run. But our brains are hardwired to almost do the opposite. We see the flashing green and red arrows and, you know, and we, we start overreacting. So, so that's the first thing to think about why trading is not simple. Um, and as far as a few setups, if somebody has a few setups they use, uh, you know, whether it's a, a pattern breakout or they're using uh, ADX and DMI, and they do it all the time and it works for them, that's great. But here's the thing, to succeed in trading with just a couple of setups means you have to be there all the time for those setups. Mm -hmm. you, can't, you could have a setup that works 70% of the time, it's profitable 70% of the time, which is really high. That okay. would be very high. But if you're not there to take all of the opportunities, then your expected value will not be positive. You know, if you're just randomly, oh, I just happen to look at my computer and there's a setup in that stock and I'll take it. It doesn't work. If it, if it were that simple, Renaissance, te Renaissance Technologies and Citadel wouldn't each have hundreds of PhDs working mm -hmm. for them. Sure. And now that's another thing that's against the small trader is that these quantitative shops that are programming computers to do the trading, they're exploiting all the traditional technical analysis. Mm -hmm. So when we're looking for a breakout and then we take the breakout, sometimes they were just able to push it through there and then reverse it. So these are other things that you have to watch for. All right, consider those myths debunked yep. now that we've talked <clears throat> about them. What about commentary? You gonna provide commentary yeah, as absolutely. we Absolutely, yeah, it'll be, uh, you know, every evening there will be a daily commentary, whether we have a trade that day or not. There, we're gonna you know, wrap up at night, open positions, things on the radar, 
And then we'll, you know, take a look at the macro, mm -hmm. macro fundamentals. I can't, uh, you know, somebody said, hey, are you still going to talk about fundamentals? I'm like, of course, you know, we'll talk about the macro. And we can talk about the fundamentals for any given stock. But we're, we've just simplified things by looking at the Zach's rank and the chart. Okay. Well, that commentary that Kevin just spoke about is what you're going to want to keep your eye on as you go through this Taser Trader service, because that's where you're going to get Kevin's latest thinking on additions to the portfolio, deletions, other constituent issues, as well as his general technical analysis of the market and other things affecting the market. And so keep an eye on that, and then he will have video updates uh, in between all of that as well. Thanks again for your interest in Zach's Taser Trader, and happy trading.